Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfendi Elite. Today, go with the spindle. Right up front when you're buying a CNC, one of the first decisions you're going to need to make is whether you're going to go with a spindle or a trim router. And Winfendi recommends a trim router, and a lot of people go that direction. I actually started out that direction myself. After a little bit more research and some more consideration, I ended up changing my mind and canceled the order for the 65 millimeter mount and placed an order for the 80 millimeter mount for the spindle. And then I placed an order at Pwn CNC for a spindle kit. In this video, I'm going to go through why I made that decision and how it's worked out for me since then. And by the way, if you're thinking of buying a, a Pwn CNC spindle kit, uh, a 5% discount code, use Ugly Dog as your coupon code at checkout and you'll get a 5% discount there. And if you'd please do me the favor and and use the links in this document to start your journey at Pwn CNC, that'd be really helpful. I get a little bit of a commission on sales made there as well. This is probably a good time on this channel for the first time to make a plea for help. If you like this content, please subscribe, like it, make some comments, help me out. YouTube has restrictions on accounts until they reach a certain amount of followers and certain amount of public view hours. And until I reach those thresholds, I can't use those features. And uh, this kind of niche content, it's not a huge audience, so it's a little bit difficult getting started. Any help you can offer there would be great. If you like it, please help me out. If you don't like it, then it's probably the wrong channel. With that, let's get into the pros and cons. So first off, I'll start off with palm routers are, uh, they get very hot and their lifespans are very short. Um, it's what this, you know, when we use palm routers or trim routers in the shop, and uh, it's, it's gotta be the shortest lifespan product or the tool that we have, you just burn those out over time. And when using them, you do notice that they get hot and you probably take breaks to let them cool down because you don't wanna burn them out too fast. So um, spindles, on the other hand, are purpose built. They're made to work long hours um, and continuous hours. And, and I want that. I want my, I want my CNC to be working for me all the time. I don't want it to be taking breaks to cool down with, with a spindle router attached. So that would, that would just be, um, it'd be a, a less efficient machine for me in that way. Now still, I could have gone down the path of a, of a spindle and I could have bought the 65 millimeter mount to support it and maybe upgraded some other day. Uh, the trim router after all is only like 130 bucks, maybe that's a throwaway expense. But if I did decide to upgrade, I'd have to also replace the spindle mount. And that's another expense I'd have to have to go through at, and buy that from Onefinity and then just store my old 65 millimeter mount someplace. And I probably would never throw that away if I had done that. Now, alternatively, I could have gone with an 85 mil or an 80 millimeter mount right off the bat and shimmed it with a 3D printed part, which people sell. And that would be an option. I'm sure a lot of people go that direction. Um, I don't really like that option very much because the, the whole Z axis and everything to do with that spindle mount needs to be as rigid as possible. And introducing a 3D part shimmed in the middle there, as great as 3D printed parts are, and I'm a big fan, as you guys know, it's just not very rigid material. You're printing with PLA or Petchy, maybe Petchy CF, even nylon. It's not rigid like a metal, even a soft metal like aluminum. So um, I just didn't like that. I felt like that introduced the potential for more error in my cuts, and it's just a problem I didn't want to even think about introducing. Trim monitors are loud. Um, I measured a trim monitor we have here. Uh, it measured at 10 feet, it measured at 83 decibels. The, the uh, Pwn CNC 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled spindle that I have here measured at the same distance, 10 feet, at 57 decibels. Now, if you think about that, that's a big difference. Um, the power, power levels in, on the decibel scale are logarithmic. So the power level doubles every three decibels. So that's a huge difference from 57 to 83 decibels. And I'll give you a quick sound of that too, just so you can see, uh, hopefully it comes through decent on the video. So this is ramping up to 18,000 RPM, which is probably where, you know, in the neighborhood where you're gonna run most cuts. Um, 
That's not very loud. Uh, now, when you when it's all said and done, you're going to be running that with dust collection, and the the bits are going to be tearing through material, and it's going to make a lot more noise than that. So I don't want to I don't want to lead you on to make you think that hey, it's going to be a silent system or anything like that. It's not going to be, but you're not going to have that extra noise coming from the spindle itself. That part's going to be quiet. And any bit of noise reduction in the shop helps, especially if it's a small shop, that thing can get really noisy. Next, let's talk about power. This guy clocks in at three horsepower, whereas a spindle router, the Makita specifically, comes in at 1.25 horsepower. So this is more than twice as powerful as the Makita. That allows it to churn through material much faster with much bigger tools and not really breathe hard when, while doing it. And speaking of bigger tools, the Makita is limited to tools with quarter inch shanks. So you're limited in that way also. Uh, while this guy can handle three eighths inch shanks, eight millimeter shanks, uh, half inch shanks. And I use, you know, most of my tools are actually are quarter inch, but I do have some eight millimeter. I do have some, uh, I do have some three eighths and I do have some half inch. And I, I'm, I'm happy I can use those. Those wouldn't be options for me if I'd, if I'd been on the Makita. Now, finally, kind of a weird problem, I think, especially if you recommend the Makita as your tool. Some people have found that with short flattening bits, even when you drop the Makita all the way down as low as it can go, those flattening bits can't hit the spool board. So what they suggest is layering another layer of MDF on top to bring the spool board up so that the tool can touch it and then flatten it off. Uh, now, I happen to use two layers of MDF on mine, so that's probably not a big deal for me if I had gone that direction. But for some people uh, who don't use this, uh, this particular wasteboard setup, you can't even flatten your wasteboard without giving up another, another three-quarter inch of, of, of Z clearance. That sounds like a bummer to me, where the spindle can be lowered much lower than that. It's a lot longer body, and uh, you could cut you know, through the table if you wanted to, for that matter. Not that you'd want to, but hey, it's possible. So with that, um, let's talk about specifically the unit that I bought and why I made the decision to get this particular unit. So I bought the 2.2 kilowatt, three horsepower, water-cooled unit. And um, I chose water-cooled specifically because I felt like it would probably do a better job of cooling. Um, water does a lot better job of heat transfer than air does. And, um, I thought, okay, that should translate here. And also the coolant in the water cooled system is a closed system. So there's not the opportunity for dust and very dusty environment here, uh, to get into the system and funk up my coolant or block the airflow where in an air cooled system, that seems like that's possible. And I, I just felt like it was a safer option to go water cooled and really not not, you know, I'm not even sure there was a price difference, um, but definitely I felt like the safer bet. And, and what I can tell you, having done this, is it never gets hot. My coolant never gets hot, never gets really warm. The spindle itself, I mean, it's like room temperature. I don't ever notice a change. Uh, so, at least in my case, that seems to be working pretty well. Now, I just went with the, the pond pump solution for pumping the coolant through the system. And uh, since that time when I purchased mine, Pwn CNC has introduced the, the sale of these chillers. And the chillers are nice. They have a, a, a fan, I believe, that blows across the, the coolant in a kind of a radiator to cool it down. And, um, and it also has an alarm system that will make a sound when, when the coolant's not flowing properly. Now, in my case, with the pond pump, and I'll go on. I'll go over this in a separate video a little bit later. Um, I'm using the the coolant pulses alarm to alarm audibly and tell me when uh, when when there's a problem with the coolant flowing, and it will actually stop the machine as well, which I feel like is really great. That's a nice safe mechanism. Um, and the fact that I never noticed this thing really getting above room temperature in the first place. I don't think that the chiller would provide any realized advantage for me in terms of cooling. So I'm not sure it's worth the additional expense there for me. And then uh, finally, when I built my table, 
uh, I designed it specifically for all the things I thought I was going to be plugging in and around it and the ways I was going to be using it. I didn't really account for a chiller, so I don't really have the space for it. And uh, when I when I do it with a five gallon container and a uh, that spindle pulses alarm, it really doesn't take up any extra space from what I had planned. So works out perfectly for me, and you know I don't. I don't feel like the chiller is necessary. And it's probably a little less expensive to go this route as well without the chiller. Another really cool thing is the, the cool, and, cool connectors you can get from Pwned CNC. And there's a link down below for those as well. And that's these guys here, right? Um, they're essentially quick disconnects for your coolant lines, but they seal so that no coolant drips out or flows out when I disconnect these, either at this end or at the other end down by the 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 sensor the hall sensor i'm using to detect the coolant flow or anywhere else in the system uh any any place where i use these they uh they don't they don't let it the coolant leak which is awesome and with me doing all the things that i do it feels like i'm chain disconnecting connecting all the time most people probably don't do that but i do it a fair bit i don't have to pull out wrenches and i don't have to worry about leaks very nice and finally the setup the Pwn CNC system is virtually plug and play. I'll include a link to their instruction page, which has a little video and some documentation on how to set it up. There's almost nothing to it. You basically plug all the things in and do a couple changes on the master controller to set the spindle up and you're done. It's working. Nothing to think about. Uh, it's awesome. You have very granular control over the RPMs, which I should have probably mentioned before versus the trim router where you don't have, you have dials and you can, you know, essentially go over the same speed ranges, but um, you don't have control or feedback on exactly how fast it's going. You're just turning a dial that's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So um, much better to have a readout that tells you what your RPMs are and to have your, your cam software be able to program that speed so you don't ever have to worry about changing that dial. I really should have mentioned that earlier in the video. So overall, um, I'm very happy with, with the system. Pwn CNC, I mean, I wish I could say more about their support, but the truth is it has worked flawlessly. I haven't had to have support on it. So um, I, I can't say much about that other than my communication with Pwn CNC around other issues and other orders and things like that. It's always been, they've been very responsive and helpful, you know, always trying to, always doing the right thing for me. So I, I, I have no complaints there and I have no reason to believe that the support of their park would be any worse than the communication that they they had have had with me around other issues. So um, overall, highly recommend the product. Highly recommend the decision of spindle versus trim router, and highly recommend Pwn CNC is a great company to work with. Um, with that, um, I guess you know I'll rewind just a little bit. Within the next ten days or so. I'm going to be installing the ATC uh, on this machine. This spindle will actually go away and be replaced with a, a different one that supports the tool changer. And I'll, I'll, of course, I'll, I'll share with you guys a video about that as well. Um, that would be another thing that it was a huge advantage here. Uh, when I when I bought this system, it came obviously with the VFD that controls the spindle, and I get to reuse that with their system when I move forward. And so I bought the upgrade kit which was discounted because of the fact that I already had some of the components that came with the first uh, the first spindle purchase. And it's awesome that they did that as a company to build it in such a way as it's an upgrade versus a whole new lock, stock, and barrel purchase of a new system. So that was really great. Uh, and a little bit of investment protection there. And hopefully they'll continue that same thought process and methodology towards future products, and I'll be well positioned to take advantage of whatever opportunities there are there as well. So with that... I think it wraps it up. Very happy with the decision. Wouldn't change a thing.